Hello boys and girls and welcome to this uh, tutorial or uh, demonstration uh, video. It's a bit different than the flights I'm doing but uh, I thought I would like to show you some more behind the scenes of how I set up and uh, create my own uh, flight plans for the flights I'm doing and uh, the process I go through uh, for creating them and for using them with uh, Wetsim and uh, and other uh, plugins. So um, I've opened the, the windows I need here and uh, obviously I'm using uh, Simbrief and uh, it's free to use. It's very easy to get started to create a user and uh, get set up. Um, you simply go to this address here, uh, simbrief.com and uh, it will take you uh, straight, to, um, straight to the site here. And uh, you will go through a short uh, account creation process. Doesn't take too long and then you can log in and I'm logged in now. Uh, if you do have a Navigraph uh, subscription you can actually link them together so you get the latest air rack uh, which is quite nice and I do recommend uh, if you're a frequent simmer and flyer to get uh, the Navigraph uh, subscription because it's, uh, it's a ton of uh, great information and uh, tools for you to use to uh, get the immersion uh, even better than uh, your understanding for for flight and aviation and simming better. Uh, I won't go into detail, but it will give you a chart. You can even have your aircraft show up uh, on the charts as you go along. As you zoom in, you will get the, the stations here and the viewers and everything, and it's, uh, it's very nice. So, uh, back to the point here, the sim brief. Uh, let's create a flight plan. Uh, my plan today is to create a flight from uh, Arlanda in Stockholm to uh, Copenhagen Airport, uh, quite standard Scandinavian route. So um, we'll go into um, dispatch and create a new flight. Oops, boom, here we go. And that will uh, put us through to this here window where we have a ton of information we are able to put in, but it's actually not that, uh, that daunting as it looks. Uh, first of all, you would need to decide what airline you would you would fly for in my case i would fly a norwegian or that's a north shuttle nax uh, they do have other call signs as, as well but in, uh, in scandinavia they mostly fly with the north shuttle uh, call sign it's their original call sign so nax and then we need the flight number now you could put in two three or whatever you want or no, keep it blank but um if you fly in VATSIM and for uh, immersion purposes, uh, I do know that the controllers there and uh, people using VATSIM uh, really appreciate it if you try to mimic uh, real world flights as much as possible. So what you can do is go to a site called FlightAware. Uh, you have the address here. And you can push in, punch in uh, the airports. We will use uh, ESSA for Stockholm Arlanda and EKCH for Copenhagen Airport Castrup and simply search and then you will get up all the flights here that operate this route uh, you get the most recent ones here you can think around it with if, if you like but uh, even the, the aircraft types and everything but uh, we are looking for a Norwegian flight and uh, we're going to be flying the SIPO so it's a uh, 738 and we have one here scheduled in 20 hours but we want to get going pretty soon so let's find the closest one that we can so we have one here that has actually just left and the next one is in three hours but that's uh, a different call sign actually uh, so we could do the the norwegian international or uh, here we have a norwegian here so let's let's take the north shuttle just for um keeping it clear so uh, we have no shuttle 4151 scheduled in 18 hours uh, so, so we could do that one and uh, we'll take that number 4151 it will work good enough for us so no shuttle 4151 and um, let's say we will depart uh, already have it here or you can just punch it in Echo zero zero Alpha for Stockholm and Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel for Copenhagen. And then um, Simbrief will actually give you a 
random uh, nearby uh, alternate and you can also see it, it it will put it in here so it gave us berlin as an alternate uh, and you can sync around with it if you like if you think yeah, berlin that's if it were real life and you had to unload passengers heading for copenhagen all the way down in germany uh, it would uh, not be too practical to transport them back to their destination so you would might try uh, alternate either uh, Landovet and Jönneborg, Aalborg or Billund. Uh, most likely you would uh, put in Billund first of all. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, let's get up here. And let's echo Kilo Bravo India. And it should update it. There we go. Billund is updated as the alternate airport. Uh, I'm not quite sure how Simbrief does it, but uh, I think it does take the latest wind conditions and uh, give you um, give you a estimate of the departure and arrival run race. So you, we could just look at a site like windy.com, gives us a ton of good information on Metas as well. So yeah, uh, it would most likely give us, uh, let's see what it gave us, yeah, 19, right? So. Let's go back to Simbrief here to or 22 right in Castro. Yeah, so we could use the uh, the Simbrief once, but if you're flying in wet sim, it's better just to make absolutely sure that you are aligned with the real world uh, arrival and departures. So let's start by uh, using Flight Radar and have a look at the latest departure routes. So we have one here, looks like he's departing. Now, it's impossible for you to go around and remembering uh, all uh, the runway numbers <laughs> that there are there. So what we'll use, we'll use our Navigraph, put in Stockholm, and we will uh, choose Arland Airport. We can use uh, the taxi here, find the airport, the runway, this is runway 19 left. One minor left. Actually, this one is <laughs> heading for uh, for Copenhagen. So, yeah, um, fun enough. But um, and it's three one nine seven. Let's see if we can find this. Three one nine seven, right here, taxing left gate. So that's the one. But uh, yeah, one nine left. Let's check with Simbrief. One way, non one nine right. So you see, you have a difference there, and uh, what you would uh, be risking by uh, generating this flight plan and going online on the Watson visit is that uh, you would have to correct it. So let's just put in one nine uh, left and push yes. So let's have a look at uh, Copenhagen Airport and the arrival there. And this coming here. So let's go back to our Navigraph charge and find Copenhagen. And the taxi airport. Runway 22 left. Uh, and it is a very popular uh, arrival uh, runway. Uh, it is in the pr most prevailing wind in Denmark, so 22 left. And let's see what Simbrief has to give us 22 right. So let's use 22 left. So it would put us here when we actually want to arrive here. And that's all that also makes sense for real world procedures. You would want to have the shortest possible taxiway here so that departures can come out here to park and the arrivals can have a shorter taxiway back to the gates. So now that we have that in order, we can start uh, looking at, uh, we cannot put in our passengers yet because we need to choose our air airframe or aircraft. And you can see we have all types of aircraft uh, already available to us. So what we are looking for is right here, 738. And now we can choose our amount of passengers, which will uh, determine our zero fuel weight. Uh, let's say for this flight we are at uh, 157 passengers, uh, quite full. And it has already put in our route. Uh, and the route is determined upon our departure and arrival runways as well. 
So let's just go through the root here. And it looks quite all right. Uh, so on no arrival, so we can actually tinker around with it a bit if you want to change here and change here. But uh, we will just keep uh, keep our first suggestion here, and uh, it will uh, it will not display exactly like this in uh, your FMC. Uh, and you will get a quite decent root actually. So um, I've flown this route many times, so it, it's also the one I prefer if the winds are as they are today. So let's just uh, keep this uh, root suggestion here. It looks good. And we can uh, fix uh, yeah you see now it updated and fixed it so that we will come in and have a nice long short final or final approach um, let's just check nothing else to do here what you could do if you're doing long haul you can do some step climbs and uh, do some uh, tinkering around but uh, we're not going to do that today we're just going to uh, make a short flight and if you're flying short flights, which most of us are, since long haul in the sim can be a bore, then this is basically all you need to know. And if you for some reason need to adjust your um, altitudes or anything uh, uh, while uh, on the route, that's just fine, no problem. It will give you the most effective fuel effective route and uh, the flight plan that it generates is uh, basically a real world uh, type flight plan that is virtually no discrepancies so let's uh, say that it's all looking good that it, we like the departure time it's okay for us then we'll push generate operation flight plan here and it'll be generating a flight plan for us and boom our flight plan is ready. We have our basic information here, our airline, flight number, aircraft type, call sign, cruise altitude today, date time, zero fuel with total weight. It will put in, uh, automate the, the fuel you need. Uh, if you're doing multiple legs, you, you can just disregard that and do your own fuel calculations of what you need, but it will put in your block fuel here. Normally I would round it up to the nearest so I'll put put in six tons for this this flight and uh, yeah this is the flight plan itself down here and you can just go over it uh, double check some of the information and uh, it, ha it has a deep well of information here everything you need to, to set up your flight and more so so you have your no times And if you go further down, we have uh, various charts. So uh, we have our routing. And uh, here we have some um, weather information. Nothing uh, within our flight path, so it should be fine. Here we have some wind information at the different flight levels. This is wind information, flight level 300. 340 and so on so this is also information you can use while in flight uh, especially for longer flights if you want to do any adjustments and our vertical profile here from um, Stockholm so you will have a, a decent idea of the winds all the way through uh, what you also could be looking for is uh, the shear rate it gives you slight indication of what the uh, turbulence to expect so you have it here shear rate and it corresponds to a number here none or one being in the low end and I think it goes up to around six so we have nothing really to worry about a little bit here but that's that's really virtually nothing so really good flight now if you are putting in uh, your uh, forecast information on the FMC 
for your descent profile, you have all that information here as well. Um, also good information to have uh, in case that you want to change your altitude or do some thinking while in flight. So what we need to do now is to uh, get our uh, flight plan in a PDF format like this. Basically the same information as I just went through with you. And we can uh, save this and I like to save it into this folder here called charts and that will give me uh, access to the flight plan uh, on my Avitab tablet uh, on board the aircraft. And if you don't have uh, Avitab, I suggest that you go on the uh, X-Plane 11 forums and look it up and uh, get on it because it's uh, I can't live without it. It's a really good tool. So now we have that ac accessible to us uh, while in the sim. So we can close this down. Now what I like to do is download uh, FMS. So here you have uh, all different uh, formats uh, in which you can download the flight plan to insert it into various things. So for that sim I'm using the smart, uh, smart uh, client it's called and you can upload your flight plan by the click of a button if you have the flight plan in the right format. So what I use is vPilot the vpilot format because the smart client accepts that and i haven't found any other uh, formats that that it accepts but it does accept vpilot so let's just grab that and store so now it's stored uh, on our downloads drive and also um, i would like it for my um, project fly so you can also insert your flight into Project Fly simply by the click of a button and uh, you'll need the PLN format and I have found that it will accept Captain Sim PLN so I will grab that as well. You can also, if you have Active Sky, uh, you can also download the uh, uh, FMS uh, format here and it can be uploaded. You can upload your flight plan into Active Sky which will give you uh, even better um, better weather in route. Uh, it has been a while since I used it because I often do multiple legs and then it's a hassle to go in and out of VR and upload it and uh, I'm quite happy with the way it updates but you, you can download it so let's do that. So now we have uh, our flight plan all said and done and uh, let's just go back here. So now we're, we're basically done and we're ready to go uh, go fly. Our flight plan is ready and we have all our FMS files. We can start uploading those to, uh, to VATSIM and to uh, Project Fly and uh, Active Sky and whatever. And that's basically it. Now, if you uh, for some reason find that, uh, oh, I forgot to do something, I forgot to change something, I need my, my flight plan, uh, you can actually uh, go in here, uh, edit last flight and you'll get it up here, you can do your changes, I uh, say I want fewer passengers and uh, simply generate it again and you have your change. You can also have a look of many other flights you have previously done. You can load them up as a flight I did from Palma to Gardamon and you can uh, do some changes here. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's a quick guide to sim brief and in flight plan creation uh, from uh, this brilliant tool and uh, i hope you uh, learned something from this video that you uh, got something from it that you can use in your own flight simming i would appreciate it very much if you would uh, like and subscribe the video it will help me uh, build the channel and uh, get some great information and great flights out there so uh, thank you again for watching and uh, see you in the next video.